So I guess like as we try to get back to, yeah, I mean, when you were coaching rails. out here <laughs> <laughs> with like, you know, the Pete Carroll days and, you know, like the Blue Blood dynasties, like the old Miami teams, old SC teams. And, you know, obviously there's the coaching search that's going on out here at SC. Just curious as to like anything you've heard or your just general thoughts on some of the candidates that are out there. I think it's really easy. Like, who? it's not hard to name the list of candidates. Yeah. Number one. So let's just start that. Like, of course, this job is awesome. It well, is everyone's a candidate. We were having Anyone. that debate earlier. Like, <laughs> the other guys didn't think so, but in my opinion, it's a top three job in college football. Yeah. And they given, didn't agree. What's that? They didn't agree? No, I, um, I mean, Like, I just the guys in the house. Oh, like, we were just having that debate. Yeah. Because okay. they're thinking, like, the programs that are doing well now, like, say, in Alabama, for instance, but, like, in my opinion, when Nick Saban leaves, like, is that dynasty going to continue going? Uh, I don't think so. Like, the resources no. that are in place here in the city and the recruiting, like, this is, you know, like, a sleeping giant. Like, it's it's set up for long-term success, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, so let's let's talk about this. This is fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> where shall we start? Let's talk about context of USC football. Mm -hmm. uh, Perfect. It is easily one of the biggest brands in the history of the game. It has a rabid fan base, oftentimes over the top, which is every blue blood and probably every fan base. Yeah. That's why we love sport. Since 1980, outside of Pete Carroll, how many 10 win seasons or more has USC had in football? I don't know. Maybe I'm like it was six. Eight is yeah. eight's probably about right. Okay. Here we go. I'll stick with it. Okay, cool. I one. believe it's um, I believe it's five. Okay. Uh, and one was in 1980 or 81. It was Larry Smith. Uh, Clay had two. Uh, yeah. Lane had one, and I think Sark had one. You'd still expect wow. way more. You'd expect way more. Yeah. Yeah, so w why do I say that? I say that to just kind of like, and I say this all the time. I say this quote all the time um, because I think it's important to share, like, expectations for SC have always been through the roof. Talent has majority uh, of the time been within yeah. this program. Mm -hmm. SC's campus, I think it's lazy to say it recruits itself, but – because it's done so well and locals grew up cheering for SC within 20 miles of SC, there's like fathers and mothers passing down SC to their kids, right? Brad, you... Yeah, my dad, I mean, my dad went to UC Davis and he still passed USC down to me. Yeah, <laughs> See, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so you, you have this natural element to it, but it's not like it's won 10 games a year for the last 40 years. To your point about Alabama and Nick Saban or Clemson and Dabo Sweeney, those guys are really elite coaches. The longer and longer Pete's away from here, the more and more respect is put on his name in terms of the type he coach yeah. he was. Like it, it, it's proven to be hard to just crank out double digit wins and Rose Bowl appearances. He was five years in a row top four in the country. Whoa. What's funny yeah. is back then I, I I felt I felt like around town it was like if we ended up playing in the Rose Bowl and it wasn't a national championship, it was like oh that's. Totally. It was like, well, it's a failed season. Yeah, That's like Alabama. Everyone felt around at school. Kids were mad that we were in the Rose Bowl yep. instead of like the like the instead of the national championship that year. I felt Every it year. as a staff. <laughs> but yeah. in our in our staff room, and that's why I love when you guys invite me in SC, it's cool to see like what messaging is in the facility. All we had was own the Rose Bowl. Because that's all we could control. And mm -hmm. you remember it? Well, you may not remember. You guys were when were you born, Mo? Ninety eight. Cool. Ninety eight. I'm ninety seven. Ninety seven. Brad. Ninety five. Ninety five. Okay. Cool. So you're not that young compared to some of your teammates. Mm -hmm. um, but in whatever 2002 it was a split national championship, or 2003, whatever it was. And Pete, I remember he he told us he's like, I had to go into that room and be like, guys, we're going to the Rose Bowl, not the national championship. How do I do that? <laughs> like, this is crazy. I think Auburn left them or something like that but he's mm -hmm. like no 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 like the only goal is to own the rose because it's the only thing we can control is pack 10 champs back then so bcs bcs was so wacky was so <laughs> wacky. <laughs> couldn't control it it was like yeah. some computer kicked out who was gonna play which i'd argue might be better than where we are today right. in yeah. the playoff uh regardless to the question usc i think uh you need a couple things i did my master's thesis on this a great what it was titled what makes a great coach great i studied wooden peach shevsky Phil, like all the top coaches and what I, Anson Dorrance, like what I learned was that you need to be consistent in teaching, like uncommonly consistent, mm. right? John Wooden famously would teach his players how to put socks on the first day of practice. Really? Right. 
Pete would walk in and say, it's all about the ball. And he would teach you how to hold the ball. Like uncommonly consistent. Every first meeting of every spring and every camp started the same exact way. Yeah. Uncommonly consistent. That's why we had themes during the week, right? I, those things may still carry over. I'm not sure. Tell the Truth Monday. Yeah, we, we do that. Oh, yeah, we yeah, yeah, that. Tell yeah. the Truth yeah. Monday. So that began with Coach Carroll. Um, what was today? Compete. Tell the truth. Mon uh, tell the truth. Monday was yesterday. No, Tuesday. Competition Tuesday. Competition Tuesday. Tuesday. Competition Tuesday. Tuesday. Did you guys Tuesday. do that as well? Yeah. No turnover or turnover. Tell the Wednesday. Yeah, okay. Okay. No repeat Thursday. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Totally. Did. Yeah. We even had some that about at Miami. It was like the same. I bet. Yeah. yeah I was on it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are on it now. It's one consistency. Uncommon consistency. Two is independent in thought. Independent in thought, and to me that speaks to confidence. Like, have you done it before? I, Pete used to always say, yeah, man, I ain't not worried about anything. I got fired twice. Jets cut me after a year. <laughs> Patriots screwed me after we won a division title. He, he wouldn't say that. I would say that. But he just, he, he just wore it. He's like, oh, that was cool. But, like, I'm not worried about a fourth down call. Like, I'm good. Right? So can you be independent in thought? Like, and really, really be grounded in that when it comes to alums and donors and so many voices. Like, it's hard, man. Like, it's really hard. To do that, in my opinion, you have to be special or seasoned. Mm. You could be both. Dante Williams, I think, is very special. Yeah, I really do. Um, clearly, isn't seasoned as a head coach. Right. Doesn't mean he's not candidate for the job. Uh, and then I, I, so if you can get past those two for me, then you're in the dialogue. Then you get into the dialogue, and I think you need these three things. Uh, number one, the phrase is likable. I think you need to be likable. I don't think you need to be like you know, Hollywood Boulevard and like on every show, like, but you need to be likable. And I say that because that's the, that we're in that era of entertainment in recruiting. It's not just recruiting, it's likability. Yeah. It's with the media, it's with the fan base, it's with the donors. Yeah. If this next coach wants to take the football team and live on a proverbial island in the facility, I think it's a terrible move. Mm. I think it's a, I think it's a, it's a terrible move. And here's why. And I just, tested it out in a class on campus. I said, hey, when you hear the football team, if they were doing their own thing and never cared about the track team or the women's basketball team or the volleyball team, like, how would, you, how would they be perceived in the athletic department? And no one would like you. And I think now in college athletics, I think it needs to be everybody connected. I think it, it, it helps out in tutoring. It helps out just the ecosystem of mental health. Like NIL, a lot of people who get NIL deals don't wear a helmet breaking news right there are people that faces are seen yeah they're female athletes there there's a lot there so i uh, i think you need to have that side of you i think you need to be likable i think you need to um i think you need to have a identity there are very few and some can there are very few and very successful head coaches who've never called a play before urban meyer is one of them right uh, PJ Flex, another one. There's some great ones that have done it at a really high level. Yeah. But they had an identity on their side right. of the ball. I think you need to have that. Because when you're at SC, if you win, I tell this to every high school quarterback, wherever you go, if you're good, your coach should not be there your whole career. Mm. And in LA, at SC, with the capability and the resources you referenced earlier, Mo, you're going to launch out of here as a coordinator. Yeah. So whatever side of the ball it is, I think you got to have a really clear identity of what this team could be. So you could fill that in. Yeah. As the head coach, if you lose, uh, think about it. When we were when when it turned a little at SC, Sark became the head coach, and he took a lot of people. Mm -hmm. He took Nick Holt, defensive coordinator. Well, Pete was a defense guy. We were good, right? And Pete had groomed up Johnny Morton to be the offensive coordinator. Like there was a plan in place of always succession yeah. when guys would All launch right. out of there. So uh, I think those two things are uh, incredibly important. Um, What's interesting is a lot of those principles. It seems like those can apply to being a quarterback too. Yeah, or being a point guard, or being a yeah, a a short any player. kind of leader, yeah. really, right? Yeah. Here's my last one. This is an easy one. I think you need to have impeccable character. Okay. I think with Clay, did, you you can't knock the human. Oh, great dude! Clay oh, yeah. he's a guy. Love yeah. Clay. I mean, I'm, and I'm a huge fan of Clay, and all, I've known him for a really long time. So I think I those too. three things: character, uh, likability, and a commitment to his to his side of the wall. This is always like <laughs> when a coach gets fired. I try to always stay out of that fray. Yeah. Because no one can win, right? Like I've the the day Clay got let go, I did my piece on what I thought about Clay as a man and as a coach, and then I my thoughts on him getting uh, fired, 
And then what I think fans need to do right now for USC football, I don't think it's this, to be honest with you. Like, I don't yeah. think it's decide who's the next head coach. Like, I think it's get behind the players. Yeah. You, know, you were, Your team was voted to win the South dramatically. And a lot of the people that voted your team to win the South probably wrote a column after the Stanford game that said you should make a change at head coach. So which is it? Yeah. So right. now that he's gone, let's get behind the team. Right. Yeah. Like, I, I'm calling for every SC fan to show up and show out on Saturday night at 7.30 at the Collie versus debate in their home about 1v1, 2v2. Like, dude, it doesn't... It, my opinion doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. You know, like, I got to trust that Mike Bone and I do and Brandon are going to crush this thing. And that an insane amount of current coaches, former coaches, up-and-coming coaches all want this job. Yeah. So whatever your list is, we can screw around with. But I, I just think that, like, they're going to nail it. They're going to nail it. Yeah. Matt, let's just go. Th- I know what the list. Matt Campbell. <laughs> He'd be awesome. He'd be freaking awesome. Um, all right. John Wooden came from the Midwest. No problems with cross town in basketball. Like I think that right. is, I didn't know that. That's a net zero to me. Uh, it's national recruiting anyway. Yeah. Uh, and what he did in the state of Iowa is phenomenal. Eric Bieniemy would be phenomenal. This is a guy. Uh, remember him and Mike Bone have a relationship. I called those games when he was the OC at Colorado wow. ten years ago or yeah. thirteen years ago. Now um, there was a relationship there. All right, who else we got? Uh, Mario Urban. Who's They'd be great. Fickle. They'd kill it. Who else? Luke Fickle. Yeah. Of course, obviously, like uh, my the mom Cincinnati could put connection. this list together. Man. <laughs> yeah. like, he would kill it if he was here. Uh, who else? Uh, Kalani Sataki would crush it yeah. here. Uh, the lane train coming back? No. <laughs> <laughs> It w- I love Lane. I've known Lane since I was eight, 19. I That would be awesome. I was calling for Ed Ogeron to come back. Yeah, that probably he not going to happen. He was the one who offered yeah, me. Of course he did. Offered me, you know. James Franklin. He's James came would back. be incredible. Love yeah. James. He grew up like 45 minutes right from where I grew up. I've known James for a minute. He'd kill it. Like mm-hmm. Those guys hit the qualifications that I referenced earlier. And I think that's what it's more about. Yeah. And, and do you have the energy to get after it? Yeah. Right, because the opportunity to win a natty is few and far between. Every school, no offense to your boys at Vanderbilt, <laughs> I, I watched their film against Stanford this morning. Loved okay. watching that game. They did some really good things. Yeah, in the beginning, they played solid. Yeah. Probably never going to win a national title there. Probably never going to win a national t- title yeah. at South Carolina. <laughs> right. Probably never going to win Pain. a title. <laughs> Sorry, like I don't know. It's just it, there's just some truths. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it, tough. Yeah, it's it's inequitable. Yeah, it was funny. I was watching the South Carolina head coach after they played Georgia. His interview was completely just as genuine as possible. They were like, "Oh yeah, where good. do you think you struggled against against Georgia this past week?" And he goes, "Well, they got about five guys on defense who weigh 340 pounds and run faster than all of you people asking me questions. So that's probably why. And they got five stars. They got five stars backing up the five stars, yeah. and they got probably four stars backing up those second five, three, five stars. So that's healthy culture. Yeah, yeah, totally. So yeah, I, who else you got?" I mean, we could go. We could rip the, Jay Norvell, like uh, Brent yeah. Brennan, uh, Jonathan Smith. They beat you this weekend. He'll be a candidate for the job. I'm gonna throw my hat in there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yogi, you can come back. Yeah, <laughs> they're gonna hire much more qualified people, and yeah. and I think that's the thing here is like, this is a big, this is a big deal, yeah. huge. huge, and they know it's a big deal. And yeah. to your point, you said resources. I've done the homework from low 30s to mid 40s. Very comparable. Dramatically comparable to Clemson, Ohio State, Alabama, Oklahoma. Yeah. So wow. this is a big job. Yeah. And they're going to hire somebody that's going to crush it here and, you know, hopefully get SC back to where uh, fans expect it to be for a little bit. 